Hello, and welcome to this lesson on the Interactive Brokers Client Portal API. In this lesson, we will be discussing how to find the contract ID using a contract symbol, how to pull an option chain, and how to pull futures data, as well as how to pull contract info and rules. To begin, let's start with searching for a contract by the underlying symbol. We can import the same libraries from the previous episode. Now, I will create a method for our request, contract search. With the framework set, we can go back to the contract search method and add some variables. I will create our base underscore URL variable once again, and an endpoint variable set to iServer forward slash secdef forward slash search. This endpoint allows us to search for an underlying symbol or company name and retrieve a relevant contract ID. The contract ID, or con ID, is a unique contract identifier that will correspond to a specific symbol, security type, and currency. Every contract at Interactive Brokers will have a unique ID. Once we have built our URL, we will need to use a JSON body. I will create the variable JSON underscore body and set it equal to a set of curly brackets to create an array value. Inside the brackets, we need to create a few fields. In this case, we'll create symbol, sect type, and name. For symbol, I will use ES. And for sect type, I will use STK for stock. For the moment, I will set name equivalent to false. This field can be used to search for a company name instead of just using a standard symbol. With the body set, I will create a reference to our coming request. I'll create the variable contract underscore rec and set it equal to requests.post. Here, we can set the URL to our base underscore URL plus endpoint variables and verify equivalent to false. Then the JSON tag to the body variable, JSON underscore body. We can show the response status code in the console by printing our contract underscore rec variable. Before doing so, I will use the JSON library to help make things more legible. We will print the JSON encoded content of the response using json.dumps. The json.dumps function will convert a string into a JSON dictionary. The parameters are the contract underscore rec dot JSON and then a set of parentheses followed by the word indent, and set that equal to the number two. If indent is a non-negative number, the JSON array element will be pretty printed with that indent level. Once we have added these initial parameters, we can run this code and view the returned values. Initially, our status response code of 200 indicates that the request was successful. In this case, there is a long list of values returned. First, we can see the con ID we were initially looking for, along with the company header, name, description, as well as further information relating to each security type. As this lists all contracts with the symbol ES, we can also see further con IDs and company names returned. For example, Eversource Energy and SOSTE in this case. Next, we will be calling the iServer forward slash secdef forward slash info endpoint for more informative contract details based on con ID. It is important for derivatives to call the forward slash secdef forward slash search endpoint for the underlying contract before calling any other secdef endpoints. We will use the previously obtained con ID for ES or the eMini S&P 500 in this case. When requesting contract details for futures, we can use the same initial Python file while then creating our new contract underscore info dot py file. In this case, the futures underscore URL variable will point to the iServer forward slash secdef forward slash info endpoint, and the parameters will contain the con ID, sec type, month, and exchange values. These details can all be pulled from our prior request. 
parameters are unique from how a JSON body is constructed. Instead of a comma separated array, we will be appending a question mark followed by the parameters set equal to our value and then delimiting using an ampersand. So to construct this, I will create four variables. Con ID, which is set equal to con ID equals and then our actual contract identifier. Sec type, let's set that equal to the string of sec type equals FUT in our case. Month, which I will set equal to month equals SEP23, the September 2023 contract. Finally, I will use exchange and set that equal to exchange equals CME. Then I will create the variable params and set it equal to a set of quotes with an ampersand inside, and then a period followed by join, and then in a set of parentheses, and then a set of brackets, I will include all of our variables, con ID, sec type, month, and exchange. This will concatenate all of my strings with an ampersand between them. We can follow this by defining request underscore URL and setting that equal to a set of quotes, dot join, and then in a set of parentheses and then brackets, I will use base underscore URL, endpoint, and then a string of a question mark, and then end it with our params variable we just made. Now we have a full URL that displays our base URL, our endpoint, and then a question mark to signify our parameters are starting. Finally, we end the string with our concatenated parameter string. While this can certainly all be written in a single string for our example, this is a common structure to help with automating the request flow once you've developed a self-sufficient program. Now, we can wrap up this program by creating another get request and assigning it to contract underscore rec as the variable name. We will use our request underscore URL as the destination to create our request. Now, if we print the status value and the json.dumps value of our request, we can see a range of details on our futures contract. If we ever need to double check a derivative con ID, review the valid exchanges of the contract or otherwise. We can now run this code and see the futures contract details returned as expected. Requesting options or futures options are quite similar. In the case of options or futures options, we must first request the secdef forward slash search endpoint, followed by the secdef forward slash strikes endpoint before requesting our info or rules endpoints. Regardless of whether you have the contract ID beforehand or not, these endpoints must be called first. Now we can create a new file for the strikes endpoint to represent this. I will use the same framework we have been operating with and create a new method called strike search. I will create an endpoint variable referencing the iServer forward slash secdef forward slash strikes string. Just like the secdef info endpoint, I will create a con ID, sec type, month, and exchange variable. I will set the con ID to the underlying contract ID, sec type to FOP, month to July 23 to review the July 23 futures option. And finally, in the case of futures option, I will define the exchange as CME. It is important to note that for standard options, you may leave out the exchange value as smart is set by default. Maintaining the other formatting as I had before, when I call this endpoint, I will see a huge range of all potential strikes a contract could use. With my knowledge of my current expiry and strike information, I will make a call to the info endpoint for my futures option. I can maintain all the same parameters as with my prior call to forward slash info, but now I will change the sec type to FOP and then now include both a strike, which I will set to 4830, and then a write, which I will set to C 
for call. With my derivative contract IDs found, I can now proceed to make requests for market data, placing orders, and more. Thank you for watching this lesson on contract details in the Client Portal API. If you find this lesson helpful, please check out our other lessons in the Client Portal API tutorial series.